glorious God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, we bless your name. We raise your name, oh Father. There is no other God like you. You deserve our praises tonight. You deserve to be exalted. You deserve to be worshipped today. Oh, Father, we thank you, glorious God. There is no other God like you, Father. Full of glory, full of honor. Father, we welcome your glory tonight. We welcome your power. We welcome your anointing this place, oh, Father. You are moving this place. We welcome your glory, Father. Come and minister to us tonight in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we bless you, God. Thank you, Father, for giving us another opportunity to be before your presence, to be before you, Father, to exalt you for who you are. Take all the authority, take all the honor. Oh, glorious God, mana zakato la bazika yandaba. Brada zaka naribazi ya laba kamazia. Repa kaza kata la bazika ndaribazika. Repa la dozika ndaribazaya. Spirit of God, we welcome you. We welcome you on this service of tonight. Spirit of God, we welcome you. We welcome you. Come and speak to us. Come and minister to us. Come and move like never before. Speak to somebody today. Speak to someone today. Father, open their eyes that they may see God, open their ears that they may hear from you, God, today in thy spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we praise your name. No other God to exalt, no other God to honor, no other God to exalt high other than your Father. Receive all the glory, receive all the honor. Jehovah, we welcome you here. Come and minister powerfully in our lives. Come and minister powerfully in our lives today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we are before you, and I pray today, oh God, your move shall be greater. Oh, touch my sister, touch my brother, touch somebody today, touch somebody, touch somebody, God, your move, oh God, is all that we need. Your move, Father, heal somebody tonight. Oh, change your life tonight in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, come and touch somebody, oh God, I pray to somebody, someone who is down tonight, oh God, I pray, you are my tongue, but it's no sorry. Reaching that person in the name of Jesus. I pray tonight, oh God, as we hear the word, oh God, somebody's being uplifted, oh God, somebody's being encouraged, oh God, somebody's being pulled, oh God, to you, Father. In the name of Jesus, somebody's being is like to you, God. There's somebody you're lifting tonight. There's somebody, God. You are touching his light tonight. There's somebody, oh Jehovah. You are bringing to your kingdom to mark in the name of Jesus. Oh, Rabba Shaka Malabo Zika Yanda Rabba Mosiah. Hey, Sheka Daka Laba Mosik and the Mosiah. Masaka Lama Zola Tirimazia. No other God, no other king like your father. You are worthy. You are you are worthy, you are worthy, God. You are worthy of praise, you are worthy of praise, you are worthy of honor. You are worthy, God. You are worthy, God. Receive all the glory. It all belongs to you, God. Receive all the glory. It all belongs to you, Father. Receive all your glory. It all belongs to you, Father. Kanda Bazekete, Rosoko Tatayanda Bazaya, Lakoteba, Masaka Daraba Mosaya, Lekete Mesekete. Fill me a fresh of God in your anointing. Fill me a fresh of God. Take over to God. Tonight, oh God, take over tonight, oh God. This service of today, Father, we walk up your spirit. Kanado, Sekatabala Bazaya. Oh, glorious God, we lift your name, Hannah. We exhort you, Hannah. We exhort you, Jesus. We exhort you, Messiah. We exhort you, Lord. We exhort you, God. No other king like your Father, Kanade, Sekatabala Bazaya. Oh, Santa Kanaba Kalado, Sekate, Repo, Tola Bazika, and Bazia. In the name of Jesus, majesty, no other king like you, Lord. Oh, take all the glory, God. Take all the honor, Father. Oh, God, receive all the glory. We lay our crowns, oh God, and worship you, God. We have nothing of our own, oh God. We lay everything we know before you, God, tonight. That Jehovah, you may take control. We lay our knowledge before you, Father. We lay God anything we are. Our understanding is in before you, God. We are before your presence. Jehovah, take all the glory. Jehovah, take all the glory. 
We lift your name, our God. We lay our crowns down and worship you, God. We worship you. We worship you in your splendor, in your glory. We worship you in your goodness. We worship you in your greatness. We worship you, Father. We worship you, God. We worship you, oh Lord. We worship you, somebody few in me. There's time to go before God. The presence of God is almighty in this place. The move of God is almighty in this place. There's something God is coming to do in your life. There's coming to, something God is coming to do in your house. You need only to open your mouth. You need only to touch God tonight. You need only to go before Him. There's something God is doing. Yes, we lay our crowns before. We lay what we know before God for Him to be lifted high in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, receive all the glory. Receive all the honor. It all belongs to you, God. Lord, we lay everything we know. We lay everything we have. Oh, God, before you, that God you may be lifted high. Take all the glory. Take all the honor, Father. For it all belongs to you, Father. Shakala babo zekete balamagoza. Nazoko tobaka damazila taribazaya. Nekete nekete riababoza. You are there, you are sick. Let me tell you tonight, there's him in this place. You are there, you are feeling down. There's lifting in this place. You are there, you don't know what to do tomorrow. There's a God who has a solution for your tomorrow. I pray for you tonight that that God is coming and locating you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, we welcome this mighty God to come and move and take all the glory because he deserves the glory because it all belongs to him. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this service of tonight. Oh God, as we continue, Father, I pray we are going to move in you, Father. We are going to see you being lifted high. We are going to see you speak to us. Tonight, oh God, move powerfully in our lives. Move powerfully in that family. Oh God, touch many in that family. In the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray today, oh God, we pray, testimonies after testimonies shall fall us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you and we give you the glory. We bless you and we give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can pray with me. You can say amen with me. Because God is coming to do something new today. In your room, in your house, something is coming to happen today. My name is Pastor Joel Israel Matolo. I walk coming from JCA Church, Judean City of Abadans. We are in Mountain View and we love you. We love you so much. Tonight is another night God has given us. And this is our Holy Communion service. I pray you prepare your blood, wherever you are, you prepare the Holy Communion. As we start this service, we shall be taken together to the end of the service. But as we start tonight, there is God who is coming to speak to us. Prepare that Holy Communion. Whatever you have in that house, we shall pray for it. Whatever you can have, there is power in the blood of Christ. Prepare it. We shall be taken at the end of the service because God is coming to do mighty things. Today, I'm coming to speak to you. I'm bringing the oracles of God before you. I'm coming to you because God has sent me to bring you this word. God has sent me to tell you there is God in heaven who hears the cry of his own. There's God who is coming to rescue somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is going to rescue you today in the name of Jesus. Allow me today to end it to a sermon today. Today the, the Lord is leading me to speak about the grace of greatness. Hallelujah. Conducting the grace of greatness. Let me tell you, if you do not carry this great of this grace of greatness. If you do not carry the, the covenant of greatness, let me tell you, my dear sister, my dear brother, people may not notice you. People may not know about you. People may not even hear about you. But today, I want we go through and know what is this we are calling about greatness. We, I need to bring it to you to understand better because let me tell you, as unless God uplifts you is when you become great. Praise the Lord. Greatness uh, uh, is to have a commanding voice. Let me tell you, without a voice, you cannot be heard. Greatness is a voice. It's a needed voice. Greatness is a commanding voice. This is a voice that makes you extraordinary. Hallelujah. This makes you different from the rest. It is an, an outstanding gift. That makes you out of the rest. It makes you to stand out of the rest. Praise the Lord. Great people refuse to take life 
Akasho, let me tell you, if you want to be great, you cannot take life the way the rest are taken. They, they are not satisfied. Any person who is great is a person who is not satisfied with where they are. They are not satisfied with being average. These are people who believe they can be above. A great person is that person who pushes for things to happen. It's those people of that zeal. It's people of that passion to make things different. Hallelujah. You want to be great, you must have that zeal. You must have, have that passion. You must have that push to make things to be different. They, they, they don't want to settle for less. Any great person in, in life does not want to be little, does not want to settle for anything less. Let me tell you, God has put an immense, immense power upon our lives and upon his people for them to be great. And every great person, let me tell you, God has made him unique and different. Let me tell you, I've come to speak to people today that God's plan is to make you to be great, is to make you to be on top. Today, I've come to speak to people who want to be great in their lives. Today, I've come to speak to people who are saying, I refuse to be dumb. Today, I've come to speak to people who are saying, I'm not going to be like my fathers. I'm not going to be my people. I need to be different. I'm coming to speak to people who feel in their hearts they need to be great. Let me tell you, great is a light. Anytime greatness is coming, it is a light that will be released and is shining upon your life. Let me tell you, anytime there's light, there's a, a, a illumination. The people can see. There's direction. Greatness will bring light in your life. Let me tell you, for you to be great, you need the light of God. Hallelujah. Let's see here. In our reading today, in the book of Isaiah 60, we can read from verse 1 to 3. Hallelujah. And hear what the Bible says. Let me tell you, God plan is to make you arise. It's to make you be seen. It's to make you to move from where you are. It's to move you from your comfort zone. It's to move you from where you have been to make sure you are recognized, to make sure you are known, to make sure you are seen. Let's hear what does God and the word of God say. <clears throat> Isaiah 61. Yes. Mm -hmm. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. The Bible says, arise from the frustration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise. So, there are places, there are powers that have kept you in some places. There are some status quo that has maintained you in a certain level. But God tonight is saying, arise from that status quo. Arise from that level you have been. Arise from that mentality you have, you have been having. And move to another level, yes. Arise to a new life. Mm -hmm. Shine. Be radiant with the glory of God. So moving to another dimension is a new life you are entering into. Mm. When you are rising, you are entering an another new dimension of life. For you to be great, let me tell you, you need to move from the dimension you have been operating to move to another higher dimension. And that is the plan of God. So God is saying today, arise. For your light has come. There is a light that has come. And this light is the power of God that is going to take you to the next level. It's the power that is going to enable you to attain what you need in life to be great. Yes. For your light has come. Uh -huh. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And the glory of God has risen upon you. There is a glory of God that already has been released upon you to make you great. There is a grace that has been released upon you to make you be recognized, to make you be heard, to make you be seen. Already it has been released. So the glory of God has been released for you to be great. I pray for you that from today you shall be recognized. I pray for you that from today people shall recognize you because you shall operate in the glory of God. God, today we are coming to operate in the glory of God. This is the word of God. Just finish. Mm. For behold, uh -huh. darkness shall cover the earth, yes. and there's darkness all peoples, but the Lord shall arise upon you, O Jerusalem. Now, God is telling us, darkness will be there. Trouble will be there. 
you will lack, you will struggle in life. Let me tell you, turmoil will be there, affliction will be there. Those is what God is calling darkness. But God is saying, in the midst of this trouble, in the midst of this darkness, God will arise you because the glory of God will make you to be outstanding. Because the glory of God will qualify you where you are not qualified, will make you to be great. You will go above the trouble. You will go beyond the darkness because light has come. Anywhere light has come, darkness will set aside. Darkness is put aside. Why? Because light is commanding the way. Light is saying this is the way. When we are there's light coming and this light is the glory of God that is coming to make you great. Yes, finish. And his glory shall be seen on you. Yes. And nations shall come to your light. Oh, Shekha, and Yabaza. kings to the brightness of your rising. Yes, so God, when the Bible says, and nations shall come to you. Let me tell you, you shall be recognized. Let me tell you, anywhere greatness is, you are promoted. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, anywhere you have that greatness, people look for you. The Bible is saying, a nation will come to look at your light. In other words, nation will come to your greatness. Oh, glory to Jesus. I pray for you. There are people who are coming to see you where God is taking you. There are people who are not going to be given any rest till they come to your greatness. Yes, they laughed against you. Yes, they pointed fingers at you. But because God is coming to uplift you, because God is coming to make you great, they will come to your greatness. There are people who have been loving at you, but let me tell you, God will make you feed them. Oh, that is the greatness I'm talking about. There are people who are by first you on the way. One day you shall carry them with your own car. That is the greatness I'm talking about. They will come to your life. There are people who do not want to see you. One day you shall house their children. Why? Because when God makes you great, let me tell you, he makes you great to be seen. Amen. He makes you great to be, to, to be known. People will seek for you. Anyone great is a person who is loved. Let me tell you, without greatness, nobody can love you. Without nothing, nobody can look for you. Let me tell you, even for you, to be great, let me tell you, you want people to love you. You want people to care for you. You want people to mind about you. Let me tell you, pray God to be great. Any person wants to be con connected with a great person. We will call them uh, 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 God papas. Let me tell you, they are not God papas. They are great people. They have worked hard. They have become what they have become because the glory of God. They did not sit down. They did not uh, uh, maintain their status. They refused to be down there. They said, I can be great. I can do whatever others are doing. I can be out. I can re remain to be on top. And let me tell you, when God sees you doing that, he makes sure your star continues shining day after day. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 58, 8. What does the Bible say? <coughs> Sorry. Isaiah 58, 8. Isaiah 58, 8. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, mm -hmm. Then shall your light break forth like yes. the morning, and your healing, your restoration, and the power of the new life shall spring forth speedingly. Now, the greatness will come like a light that comes forth in the morning. When in the morning light is coming, let me tell you, darkness does not stay. Darkness does not argue. Let me tell you, it gives away because light has come. Let me tell you, when God has started blessing you, when God has started lifting you, when God has started making you great, let me tell you, they will talk. They will be there, but they will see you being lifted. Why? Because the glory of God will have come upon your life. I pray for you. You shall come out like the light of the morning. You shall come out like the light of the morning. They shall see you coming up. And let me tell you, it's not just coming up. You shall remain on top and on top all through in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You shall be on top. I've come to speak to somebody. Let me tell you, God is coming to make you great. God is coming you to make to is coming to your way to make you great in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, I need to speak to people today, is full of principles. Let me, let me tell you, for you to be great, there are some principles you need to enter, you need to enter into. Let me tell you, God will not just make you just great for the sake of making you grace. The blessing of God are kept in a secret for everybody. 
They are not put in heaven. For you to be great, there is what has been put into secrets. You need to arise. That's the reason the Bible is saying you need to arise. Without rising, let me tell you, the light may not come your way. The light may be there, but because you have not risen, you will not see, you have not entered, you have not known the principles of coming up, you have not gone and gotten the keys of being great. Let me tell you, you will find yourself, you are down. Hallelujah. These are the keys, and we shall see them. Now, they are concealed, and it takes people with a insight to find it out. It will take somebody who shall search for it to see. Proverbs 25, 2. What does the Bible say about the things of God? That have been that God does not give you just on a silver plate. You have to work for it. Hallelujah. For this grace to work for you, let me tell you, you have to stand. You have to arise. Uh -huh. Proverbs 25, 2. Yes. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. It is the glory of God. It is the plan of God. It is the attribute of God. Hey, it is the glory of God to conceal what? It is the glory of God to conceal a thing. To conceal a thing. But the glory of kings is to search out a thing. The, the Bible is saying it is the glory of kings to search out of that thing. The thing has been consumed. It has been needed. But let me tell you, you also carry the glory. God is saying it is the glory of God to conceal things. Oh, glory to Jesus. But kings, you have been called king because God is putting on top. A great person is a king. It's a person people can look at. It's a person people can believe in. A king will go and look for this glory. He will go and take and know. He will go and know what is this glory of God. Let me tell you, anytime you seek in those hidden things, you see the principles of God. We call them keys to greatness. Let me tell you, you must understand what are these keys. For you to be great, let me tell you, greatness is the one of is one of the blessings of God. It is one of the blessings of God. God told Abraham in the book of Genesis, I shall make you great. It was a principle God was giving. It was a covenant God was entering with Abraham. So a, a key God is giving you, it is a glory God is releasing to you. If you do not understand, if you do not go and understand and consider and get the information, you will never be a king. You will not be a king. You will never be a, a, a great because you have not known. The principles are like keys that open doors. Hallelujah. These principles of being great are like keys. When you are without a key, let me tell you, as success becomes a thing of struggle. Without these keys, without knowing these principles, you cannot be great. You cannot be above them. A keyless man is an hopeless person. If you do not carry the keys of greatness, if you do not carry the keys, the grace, the glory of God to make you great, let me tell you, you will die hopeless. Hallelujah, but that is not the plan of God. I pray for you. You are not going to die hopeless in the name of Jesus. God has released the grace. God has released his grace. And he say, arise, for your light has come already. The blessing of God is the grace, is the light that God has released. The principles God has already has released to us. He has given you what it takes for you to be great. Oh, glory to Jesus. I feel like speaking to people, let me tell you. Let me tell you, to be great means to be successful, to be prosperous. <laughs> but the greatness divides a lot in person's life. This greatness, it is that life that comes to a person. For you to be great, you must be that person who lives a life of blessing. A life of blessing others. Let me tell you, a great man is a man who is blessing people. It's a man who can be helped to others. It's a man who can stand and be counted out. It's a man who can stand and people believe in. That is a great person. You cannot be great if nobody is following you. Ah, great people, poor people. Great people are liked by people. I said great people are loved. If you are not loved, you cannot pull. And I'm saying a great man is the man who is blessing people. 
People will not love you if you do not bless them. People will not love you if you don't pull them. There is something that will attract them to you. There is something you carry that will attract them to you. You must be lovable. Hallelujah. A man that gives joy and support to others, that person is great. Hallelujah. That person is great. A man that shares his joy and support to others is a person is great. Greatness is not purely a measure of the savings you have. Greatness is not purely of what you have. If you do not help people, if you do not bless people, let me tell you that is not greatness. That, that, that we cannot call it great. People cannot like you. There are people who have things. There are people who, 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 who have millions and millions of money. But let me tell you, they do not pull anyone. Why? Because they are not great. That person who pulls people, that person who is liked by people, let me tell you, that is a great person. That person who helps, that person who can pay your school fees when you do not have, that person is great. That person who can come and pay your rent when you are past, uh, the landlord is closing your door, that person is great. Hallelujah. That person has seen the light of God. That person is operating the glory of God. We can call that person a great man, a great person. I pray for you. You shall be great in the name of Jesus. Amen. God has created you to be helping others. God has created you to be a close friend to your friends and help them in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Success is not a product of accident. It does not just happen for chance. Hallelujah. It is never inherited. Let me tell you, success, you cannot inherit success. Greatness is not a promise. It is a covenant. It is a covenant you need to enter into. You need to understand the principles. When you understand the principles, you need to come and see the concealed power, the concealed things God has concealed. And the Bible says, for kings will understand the concealed thing. For them to be king, you will understand what is this God has, has concealed. And when you conceal them, they will call you king. Hallelujah. They will call you blessed. They will call you lifted. They will call you your you favorite. Why? Because you have understood the principle and the keys for one to be great. Hallelujah. Amen. Greatness is a covenant. God entered into a covenant with Abraham. He told him you will be great. It was a covenant. So greatness is not something you just attain. It is a principle. You need to go through it. It is a, some keys. It, it is doors you need to open. Hallelujah. Men who walk in it, they walk in it consciously. Let me tell you, don't walk in greatness the way you want. Hallelujah. Men must learn how to activate greatness in their lives. It does not just come on a silver plate. You must understand the principles because anytime greatness comes to you and you do not understand or now to walk in it, let me tell you, it leaves you. Hey, you lose the blessing of the covenant. You lose the blessing of others. We have seen people who have been blessed before, but in the middle of the, of the climbing, they lost the map. They lost the way. The darkness came their way. And darkness carried them away. The light was not seen. Hallelujah. They do not understand the principle. Because anytime you understand the concealed principles of God, anytime you have the keys that open the doors, you shall not go down. The plan of God is for you to continue rising up. And I pray for you. You shall never go down in the name of Jesus. Anywhere you have been going down, I speak to you in the name above your name. You are coming up in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been pulling down, whatever has making you lose today by the power in the blood of Jesus, I speak to you in the the name of Jesus. You are coming up and you are coming to be great in the name of Jesus. Yes, you are coming to be great in the name of Jesus. I speak to you. You are coming to be great and people will come looking for you. Why? Because the grace of God will be sufficient upon you for it has been released in abundance upon your life. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is coming to make you great today. You are there. You are asking how, oh, pastor, can I be great? I shall give you some ways, some catalysts, that can activate the covenant of greatness. I just give you some points, some keys, some principles that can make you great. Hallelujah. Very few, I cannot finish. But today I'll give you something, some few points that can make you activate the greatness God has already released to you. Hallelujah. Today we are going to stand the number one. One of the catalysts that can activate you to be great. Number one is to be obedient. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to Jesus. To overhear 
that you can listen. Hey, to have a hear that you can hear and, and to have a hear that you can follow instructions. Let me tell you. This means submitting oneself to authority of another. Hey, if you cannot be led, you cannot lead. Hallelujah. Greatness will not just come like just the way it comes. For that to shine, for that light to come in the morning, there must be somebody you saw. There must be somebody you have been following. There must be somebody who has trained you to be great. When you follow and make sure you are obedient, you shall be great. When you are obedient to the principles of God, when you are obedient to the keys that I'm giving you today, let me tell you, you'll be great. Hallelujah. Must submit to authority of God for he has good thoughts concerning about you. Jeremiah 21, 29, 11. God is speaking about the good plans he has for us. Let me tell you. And he's speaking about the plans are good. Let's hear which are these plans God has until you submit to the word of God, to the voice of God and to understand you are not supposed to be down. God has no plan to make you poor. God has no plan to make sure all the time your house will be closed. That is not the plan of God. God has no plan to make you, you die a miserable person. That is not the plan of God. God has a plan that is unique for your life. Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. Yes. For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you. God is saying he knows the plans. Hey, that he has for you, God already knows. Uh-huh. What are the plans? Says the Lord. Uh-huh. Thoughts and plans for welfare. I know the plans and the thoughts I have for you. You are in the mind of God. God in God's mind, God is planning something for you. Hallelujah. What are these plans and thoughts? For welfare and peace uh -huh. and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. These are plans God has for you. To make sure you are peace. To make sure you live well. To make sure you are on top. To make sure this, you are at rest. Hallelujah. How will you be at rest when you are poor? That is not the plan of God. How will you be at peace when people, your children are being chased away from the school? That is not peace. That is not rest. That is not the plan of God. The plan of God is to make sure you have what it takes to be there. You can pay the fees of your children in time. You can pay your rent in time. You can support others in time. Let me tell you, that is the plan of God. They are good to make sure they give you rest and give you peace. That is the plan of God. And he are saying, you are in his plan and his thought. God has never forgotten about you. God is ever thinking about you, my dear sister, my dear brother. You are there, you are so down. You do not know what to do. You do not know what to eat tomorrow. Let me, let me tell you, God is not silent. God still has a good plan for you. What you need to realize is the light has already come. You need to arise. You need to arise from where you are, you are in. You need to say and speak to yourself that you cannot be poor, that you are not created to lack, that you are not created to have your house being locked. You are not created to suffer shame. You need to come out of that cocoon. You need to understand the principles and come out from that, that place you are in. Let me tell you, it is the plan of God. Hallelujah. God thinks about your prosperity every day. The keys of obedience, it is there. Isaiah 119. God is speaking and he, he cares about us. For you to be great, you must obey God. For God does not help disobedient people. Yes, Isaiah 119. Isaiah 119. Uh -huh. If you are willing and obedient, the Bible says if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Now the Bible says if you are willing, the willingness if you are ready, if you are already arisen, hallelujah, the Bible is saying, if you are ready, if you are prepared yourself, if you are willing and obedient, what does the Bible say? If you are willing and obedient, uh -huh. you shall eat the good of the land. You shall eat the good of the land. Let me tell you, if you are obedient, if you have risen, the light has come, you have not sat down. Let me tell you, God is saying you shall eat the good of the land. The good of the land is you shall have plenteous. You shall have surplus. People shall look for you. People shall call you the great. Why? Because you are eating the best of the land. And that is the plan of God. Job 36, 11. Oh, glory to Jesus. 
The word of God is speaking to somebody. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the best of the land. Oh, glory to Jesus. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. From today, you shall eat the best of the land. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Job 36, 11. Job 36, 11. Uh -huh. If they obey and serve him. Now the Bible says, if they, are, they obey, obedient again. And serve God. Serving God is work. Hallelujah. Serving God is rising. Glory to Jesus. If they obey and serve God, they will do what? If they obey and serve him, uh -huh. they shall spend their days in prosperity. They shall spend their days in prosperity. And their ears in pleasantness of jo and joy. And their ears in pleasantness. Let me tell you, if they obey, they are willing, they arise, they shall live their days in prosperity. Let me tell you, prosperity to come your way, you must be great. A great man is a great is a man with prosperity. I pray for you. May prosperity come your way in the name of Jesus. I pray for you from today. Obedience will be key in your life. When you obey, when you are willing, when you arise, you shall eat the best of the land and you shall live in prosperity. Amen. Oh, glory to be Amen. to Jesus. Amen. I pray for you. Prosperity will never move out of your door in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. May you tap that prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number two, catalyst, number two key that can take you to the covenant of greatness is diligence. Oh, glory to Jesus. Diligence. Now, our diligence means hard work. Hallelujah. When you work hard, hallelujah, when you do not leave, you are jumping down, let me tell you. You work with your own strength. You strive for it. Let me tell you, you shall be great. Any great man is a man who strives to be great. You cannot be great when you are not striving to be great. You cannot be great when you are not diligent. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, manna stopped in the days of the wilderness. Today there is no manna. You need to work for what you need. You need to work for the rent to come your way. You need to work for you to dress well. You need to work for your children to go to school. You need to work for you to be in a position. You need to work for you to buy a car. Eh, it does not come. You need to work for you to have houses. The people you see who have invested, they are great people. They have worked. Hallelujah. You need to work hard. You need to be diligent. For you to be great, let me tell you, you must be diligent in what you do. You must work hard. You are hands are supposed to work. They are instruments of working. Hey, they are parenters that have been used to work because God has blessed our hands to work. And you are saying, whatever you shall lay hands on, it shall be blessed. God is speaking about your hands. What are you doing with your hands? You need to wake up. You need to arise and use your hands. You need to work hard and God is going to give you the diligence you want. He's going to make you be great. Oh, glory to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Your hands will bring you to the corridors of power. Hallelujah. Proverbs 22, 29. The people you see interacting with the great men, they are people of that divide their hands. Hey, they have worked out. Glory to Jesus. Mm -hmm. What does the Bible say? Proverbs 22, 29. Yes. Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? Do you see a man who is hard working in his business? Who is using skills in his business? He's working very early in the morning. He knows clients come in the morning to buy bread. Hey, he's working before five in the morning when people take breakfast. Hey, and he sells his bread before one, before seven. His breaths are gone. You, you are working at night. When others have gone, they have already taken breakfast. Wow, are you going to be diligent? Hey, finish. Do you see a man diligent and skillful in his business? Uh -huh. He will stand before kings. He will stand before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. He will not stand before useless men. Hallelujah. A man who is diligent in his work. A man who is skillful in his work. A man who works hard. Let me tell you, he will stand before men. He shall walk in the corridor 
because of great men, I pray for you. You shall work hard in the name of Jesus. You are, may your hands help you to move in the corridors of great men in the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall uh, uh, walk in the corridors of great men. Why? Because you have washed your hands. You have dirtified your hands. And today, you are becoming great. Hallelujah. Amen. There, there, there's a saying that was written in the book of uh, by one of the writer Chinuachebe uh, in Things Fall Apart. When a young man washes his hands, he will die with kings. It is a saying. It is in Nigeria. But let me tell you, it is a saying that says, when a man washes, a young man washes his hands, it means a young man, his hands has been dirty, he has worked hard. So when he washes his hands, he will die with the king. Before he washes his hands, he has worked. They have been dirtified. So the money has worked. He is diligent in what he does. Let me tell you, it will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Number three thing, catalyst that will activate the covenant of greatness, study, knowledge. Oh, glory to Jesus. Nothing takes the place of knowledge. Amen. No man can ever rise beyond the level of his knowledge. Proverbs 18, 16. You will never go beyond the knowledge you have. The level you have taken yourself, that is the place you stay. Let me tell you, you need to strive to have more knowledge. If your knowledge is just only to wash cars, you have no other knowledge. Let me tell you, you will continue laying where you are washing cars. There are people who have said, I will wash cars. I will also drive them. I will also own one. Let me tell you, the knowledge they want to gain, they want to know how to drive. Yes, the man started by washing cars. But now he's telling you, leave your, car, leave your keys. I can park for you. The man has known how to drive. The next day he will tell me, I can work for you. I can be your driver. He will be your driver. The next time you will see that person drive his own. Why? The man has studied. He has gained knowledge. Have you gained knowledge for you to be great? Let me tell you, greatness, you will never go beyond the level of your knowledge. What you know is who you are. Hallelujah. Knowledge is what uh, demarcates between successful and the unsuccessful people. It will demarcate. Knowledge will bring a difference between those who know and those who do not know. Let me tell you, knowledge will make those who are becoming great and those who are not great. Let me tell you, great people, they have knowledge. There's what they know that has made them to be great. For you to be great, you must arise. You must know the light has come. Which is this light? The keys, the principles I was saying, the concealed things that will make you a king. Those are the principles, the knowledge, the understanding God wants you to have for you to be great. Oh, glory to Jesus. What you know, when put into use, you become successful. Hosea 4.6. Oh, glory to Jesus. What you know, when put into practice, you become successful. Hosea 4.6. Hosea 4.6. Mm -hmm. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now listen, my people are destroyed. My people perish because of lack of knowledge, Yes. Because you, mm. the priestly nation, mm. has rejected knowledge, mm. I will also reject you that you shall not be my priest to me. Now, listen, if you have rejected knowledge, you shall not be a priest, you shall not be a king. If you lack the know-how, you lack the skills, you are not working diligently, you are not obedient, let me tell you, you do not know the principles of being great, let me tell you, you will never be a priest. You have refused. That's the reason the Bible is saying, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. You want to perish? That is not my portion. I pray for you. The knowledge you will gain today, the knowledge you are gaining this hour, it will make you be great. May it be your portion in the name of Jesus. You are becoming great in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. You are becoming great in the name of Jesus. Number four, as I continue finishing, hallelujah. Number four, another catalyst that will make you to be great, add prayer. Oh, glory to Jesus. Prayer is communication between man and God. There are a lot of unsuccess forces that could hinder a man to become great. There are so many forces that can fight you when you are coming up. Yes, your light has come, but there is a force that is saying you cannot be great. Let me tell you, what will kill these forces is prayer. Is when you invite God 
to take the battle from you. It's when you invite God to take you to the next level. It's when you ignite and you raise an altar of prayer. It's when you say, I will be great. Yes, my father was not great. Yes, my father did not have anything, but I refuse to be like my father. I refuse to live the life of my father. When you start seeking God, you start calling the name of God, you start believing in God, God will help you to be great. Hallelujah. There are demons that are saying you never prosper in life. There are demons that are saying you never move to the next level. There are demons that are saying you will never be anything. Let me tell you, prayer will silence those demons. When you pray targeted prayers, when you undo these demons, let me tell you, my dear sister, my dear brother, you shall be great. Hallelujah. They are targeted prayers. They pull down the strongholds of the enemy. They pull down the powers of the enemy. They destroy the altars of the enemy that are empowering to make sure you, you are never great. There are people who have gone to school. There are people who have seen books. There are people who have knowledge. There are people who have skills. But let me tell you today, because of some forces in their lives, they are down. They are never great. I pray for you. May you understand what is fighting you. May you come to a realization and understand where you are. And you call upon the name of the Lord. And you tell God, Jehovah, here I am. Take me to the next level. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33, when we pray, our God will hear us and answer us. And show us great things we do not know about. There are things you do not know. There are things that are being hidden in the story. There are things you do not know. They are fighting you to be great. Let me tell you, every time you pray, God will uplift you. He will make sure you realize and know that they are concealed. You may not know. Oh, there are blessings that are concealed. I suddenly you pray. My dear brother, my dear sister, time for prayer is now. You need to pray to be great. You need to pray to be great. I pray with you. You shall be great in the name of Jesus. I need you to enter into a place. You enter into a secret place and you kneel down before God and you cry to God, oh my father, I refuse to be less. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to go without. I refuse to remain this life. I refuse to borrow. I refuse my doors to be closed. I refuse my children to be poor. I refuse my to be chased out of the school. Let me tell you, you are praying, you are praying, you are believing in God, and God is so faithful, He shall hear your prayer. And he will come to rescue you. Today, there's somebody who's being rescued. There's a God, yes, you have cried. I can see a sister in Muranga who is crying so much. I can see you. You have cried to God. Hey, Wailimo, you have cried to God. You have cried to God. How will I continue living a life like this? Let me tell you, God has heard your prayer. God is coming to rescue you. Let me tell you, God is coming to show you things you have never known before. I'm telling you, God is coming. I've heard your name. Oh, it is coming. It will happen. It will not delay. Our God is not a man to lie. God is coming to rescue you in the mighty name of Jesus because prayers will come to rescue you. Prayers will take you to another level. The last point, what will catal uh, uh, give a catalyst for you to be great, to enter into the covenant of greatness is giving. Oh, glory to Jesus. <laughs> no one becomes great without knowing the principle of giving, without knowing to give. Without sharing, I've told you, a great man is known to be a great man when he helps others. A great man will be known to be a great man when he stands with the rest. You'll be known you are great. People will love you when you help them. There are people we know. There are politicians, leaders we know. Because of helping others, people love them. They can fight for them and they have nothing. But let me tell you, because, they, because of their generosity, they have become great. There are people names who cannot sweep them away. Why? Because they have stood with others. Their names are known. They have become great. You cannot cover them. You cannot destroy. There are people you cannot touch because they have helped lives of people. When you touch them, people will speak. Hey, I pray for you that you shall touch the lives of people. And you touch the lives of people by giving. Hey, Luke 6, 38. Oh, glory to Jesus. A giver is always blessed. A giver is always on the receiving end. As somebody who helps, does not lack. Somebody who stands with others, God makes sure he has. Oh, Luke 6, 38. The Bible says, give it, give, uh, give it, and it shall be given unto you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Give 
and the gift will be given to you. Give and what? Give. Mm -hmm. And the gift will be given to you. Now, first thing God is saying, give. What you are giving is again saying, and gifts shall be given to you. The first thing you need to do is to arise. The arising is to give. Because light has come, you have it. Then when you give, you have a reason. You are working diligently. Hallelujah. Gifts shall be given to you. Give one thing. Gifts shall be given to you. You give one, you receive money. Hey, hey, finish. Good measure. Good measure. Press down. Press down. Shaken together. Shaken together. And running over. And running over. Will they pour into the pot formed by the bosom of your robe and used as a bag? <laughs> For with the measure you deal you deal out, uh, with the measure you use when you confer benefit on others, mm. it will be measured back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall men give unto your bosom. Let me tell you, if you are a giver, God makes sure you receive the gifts back. God will command men to give to you. That's the reason you see great people. The people who bless others. Let me tell you, gifts come their way. Promotion when they come, they are given. Hey, election come, they are elected. Why? The gifts come back. Men, give it to you. Oh, glory to Jesus. You are giving the secret. God makes you. He blesses you. In open place on top of the mountains. And he's saying he shall do this because that is the measure you have given. Any person does not give. Any person who is not a giver, let me tell you, will never receive. For you to be great, you must be a giver. Hallelujah. Amen. You must be somebody who is giving. Give what you have. People are sleeping hungry. The next door, your neighbor is sleeping hungry and you are eating. Let me tell you, you learn to share with that person. God will increase more. Hallelujah. Somebody's been closed his house because of rent. You have money in the bank. You pay the rent of that person. As you pay, you put a tag on that money. You are saying, God, I will never have my house be closed because of rent. God is not going only to provide the rent. He will give you your own house. That is the blessing of God. Because God is saying, he shall make men to bless you, to put the blessing in your blossom. Hey, that is the plan of God. He shall make you to be great. He shall make you. You will receive it. Hey, glory to Jesus. God will make people not to sleep, to bless you because you are given. Hallelujah. Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 11, 24. As we finish. Oh, glory to Jesus. Proverbs 11, 24. Yes. There are those who generously scatter abroad. Listen. There are those who generously scatter abroad. They do not care. They scatter. Scattering, throwing without a plan. Just throwing anyhow. You scatter. You, you give here. You give there. You bless here. You bless there. Those who scatter uh, will do what? They are those who scatter generously. Generously, yes, scatter. Abroad. Yeah. And, and yet increase more. And yet increase more. They are those who withhold more than is fitting. Then there are those who withhold. And do what? There are those who withhold more than is fitting uh, or what is justly due, mm -hmm. but it results only in want. <laughs> My friend, the Bible is saying, those who withhold, it will result into want. It will result into poverty. It will result into lack. Let me tell you, those who scatter in generosity, in a brother is cut everywhere. Those who share, those who bless others, let me tell you, God makes them to have more. Those who do not, those who hold the little they have, they enter into poverty. They enter into scarcity. I pray for you that from today, as you practice these principles, as you practice these keys, as you enter into these categories to make you great, you shall be great in the name of Jesus. I pray for you from today. You shall be a giver. Yes, you have been having, but you have never been sharing. I pray for you. May God give you that generosity spirit. May God give you that spirit to help others. May God give you that spirit to assist others. Because anytime you assist, you are telling God, I'm ready for more. You are opening your hands, God to fill you. You are opening your mouth wide, God to fill you. Why? Because you are saying you need more. I pray for you from today as you work diligently. From today as you obey, you shall be blessed. 
you shall be great. You are there. You are asking, Pastor, how can I be great? Let me tell you, God is coming to make you great. God is coming to make you great. There's a number you need to call us. We are here to pray for you. You need to be great. Let me tell you, you have heard. The word has spoken to you. You have believed in God. That God needs to make you great. The number is 0758. 002145. You can call that number. Let me tell you, there's somebody waiting to pray for you. I pray for you. You shall be great in the name of Jesus. There are principles you need to know. There are some things that have been consumed in your life. You have been struggling to, st to stand. You have been struggling to be on top there. Let me tell you, you need the grace of greatness. You need the covenant of greatness. You need to be introduced to that covenant. You need to be, to be put into that covenant. Praise the Lord. You need to enter. The number is 07 0-0-2-1-4-5. You can call that number. We are waiting to pray with you. I'm waiting also to pray with you. I shall make sure you enter into that covenant. You are here looking at us. You are here viewing us. You are not born again. I love you with the love of Christ. And Jesus loves you so much. Let me tell you, you shall not be great if you have no relationship with Christ. You shall not be great if there is no way you know God. Let me tell you, God waits, is waiting for you. You need to obey and hear the voice of God for God to make you great. Let me tell you, it's only those who know God. God shall make them strong. Let me tell you, it's until you know God, God will strengthen you and will make you to be great. I pray for you, you shall be great. You are there. You need to be born again. You are there. You are telling pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I need to give my life to Jesus. Say this prayer after me and Jesus is coming your life. Say, my father, I'm a sinner. I come to you. Forgive my sins. Lord, forgive my sins. Cleanse me. Perfect me. Make me new. Father, I'm before you. Make me a new creature. You have prayed that prayer. You are there, my dear sister, my dear brother. God loves you with a love that cannot be measured. God loves you. It is joy in heaven. When you give your lives to Jesus, I need to celebrate with you. I need God to make you great. I need God to uplift you. I need God to make you to join with the rest who are greatly blessed by God. And when you have given your life to Christ, let me tell you, greatness will come. That is one step you are meant for God to make you great. Because let me tell you, the blessing of God will locate you. Because now you have a connection with your father. You have a connection with your maker. God owns all things. You have a connection to inherit the kingdom of God. Why? Because you have been made a son of the kingdom. Let me tell you, you can now ask about of your inheritance. You can now ask about anything you need from your father. And God is able to give to you. Jesus loves you so much. You have prayed that prayer. Give us a call. Give us a test. The number is the same. 0758 002145. You can call that number. You can give us a test. We are waiting to speak to you. We are waiting to lead you. We are waiting to bless you. You are there also. You need to give. Let me tell you, you have heard. What I've said is only that man who scatters generously who receives. It's only that person who gives if you are not a giver, God will not give to you. You need doors to open for you for prosperity. Be a giver. You need to give a sacrifice to us. You need to give your offering. You need to give your, your, your tithe to us. Let me tell you, this ministry, we need you. Us being here, this is money. Us coming to you, we are paying for this. Let me tell you, we are waiting for you. You need to give. The same number, you can use that number. Put your money there. 0758 002145 Somebody is waiting. As we receive it, let me tell you, we shall pray with you. It is not going to be in vain. You support this ministry. You support this commission. There are people who are looking at us. There are levers who need to be blessed of this work. There are people under me. There are people who are looking at me as their pastor. Let me tell you, they need to be fed from this commission. They don't, you touch their lives. You have told God, you am ready. Feed me. I pray for you. As you give your gift today, may it be blessed in the name of Jesus. God is coming your way in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God is coming your way. And as we finish, take your blood, take your bread, the Holy Communion. Today, it is our service of Holy Communion. Let me tell you, Jesus told his disciples, I will not leave you the way you are. I shall give you power. The power, Jesus was saying, beside the Holy Spirit, he gave them and he introduced to them 
the Holy Communion. He told them, I shall be with you. The body of Christ and the blood of Jesus is what will keep you going to more. Is what will keep you to be great. You have not been taking the blood, the body of Christ. Tonight, you have an opportunity. Take whatever you have in your house. You have bread in your house, take that bread. You have juice in your house, take that juice. We shall pray for it, it will turn to blood. You have whatever you have in the house, you have water, take it. As I pray, let me tell you, it will turn to blood. It will turn to bread, it will turn to bread. And let me tell you, the power shall be great upon your life. Hallelujah. It shall be great upon your life. If you have taken that, let me tell you, God is coming through for you tonight as we take all together in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, when he was on being crucified, he took the bread and he broke it. And he told his disciples, take this. This is my body that will be broken for you. We are taking the body of Christ. Yes, it might be, be biscuit. It might be a bread. Whatever you are taking, let me tell you, it is going to turn to be the body of Christ. As you take this body, this is the body that cannot be defeated. This is the body that cannot be brought down. This is the body that cannot die. You are taking the body of Christ. You will not die. You shall not be down. You are taking the body that will take you to higher levels. That will make you to be great. That will make you to that will introduce you to, to places you have never been before. Take the body of Christ. Again, he took the cup and he thanked and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. As we take the blood tonight, we are entering into a new covenant with God. You are telling Jesus, I'm taking the blood. May the blood wash me, perfect me, make me a new creature. This blood will make you new, will give you the power. As you take this blood, it will make you be great. Let me tell you, this is the blood you need. This is the blood that will perfect and wash your hands. This is the blood that will perfect and wash your body and perfect your soul and strengthen your body. You shall arise as you take this blood. This is the blood that is coming to your bed and healing you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is coming to where you are. As you take the body and take the blood tonight, I speak the power upon the blood and the body cry. Father, I bless these supplements. Let the power in the body of Christ be upon us as we take it tonight. Let it bring healing. Let it heal my family. Let this power make me great. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless this bread. We bless this blood. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are blessed these supplements. It is not water. It is not juice. It is not biscuit. It is the body of Christ. It is the blood of Jesus. As you take it tonight, you are taking Jesus and the power of Jesus in your body. You are taking the blood of Jesus in your body in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's all take the body all together. And the blood. You are there, you have taken the moon. You have taken the blood. I pray for you. May the power in the body of Christ turn your life to laughter. May people seek you from today. May people love you from today. I pray for you. The power that resurrected Jesus from the grave is making you great today. In the mighty name of Jesus, where people have down looked upon you, may that power make you great in the name of Jesus. I pray for you from today, you shall be great. Anywhere they have looked down on you, today start walking, start working on, start believing in God, start giving, and let me tell you, start praying, you shall be great. And the blood of Jesus is coming to perfect you to be great. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you because God, you have prepared the hearts of your people. They have heard your word tonight. I pray tonight for the reason they have heard this word. Let their lives never be the same. I bless them with the blessing of my father. And I pray from today, they shall never be the same again. God uplift them. Increase upon their life. Father, I give you the praise and I give you the honor. We give you the praises because God, you have been with us. Thank you God for being with us. In Jesus name, we pray and we give thanks. Thank you for following us. We are Judean City of Abundance, JCA. We love you with the love of Christ. I'm Pastor Joel Israel. We love you with the love of Christ. We welcome you again on Friday. 
We shall be here together with a prophetic servant. The servant of God is ready to bless you with the word. Pastor Minister, they will be coming powerfully to you. Wait, and God is coming to bless. And on Sunday, listen to us. Again, I shall be coming to speak to you about the grace oh, of God. Let me tell you, you shall be blessed. You shall be great in the mighty name of Jesus. May God bless you, richly bless you in Jesus' name. Shalom. God bless you.